Well, hello and how are you? Hey friends, welcome to the Shin Show. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe, coming to you from right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Yep, hey, this here is Wednesday, January 16th, 2019, V-Blog number 2518. Hey, you know what? I got a happy birthday shout out to Randy Salmons. So without further ado, here is a birthday song for you. Hey, I heard it's your birthday today, so happy birthday, I'm going to say. You know, Randy, you're starting a brand new year today, so happy birthday to you today. I said, hey, I heard it's your birthday today, so happy birthday, I'm going to say. You know, you're starting a brand new year today, so happy birthday to you today, and many more. cha 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 Hey, I thought I'd go ahead and uh, continue on with some prominent members of the St. Charles community. And I thought we might start with, uh, we might start, we might continue on with, um, how about Charles Barmeo or St. Uh, or, or, uh, St. Barmeo. Is that right? Barmeo Church? Of course that's right. Anyway, hey, um, how about his early life? Charles was a descendant of nobility. The Barmeo family was one of the most accent or ancient and wealthy in Lombay, Lombardy. Made famous by several notable men, both in the church and and state. The family coat of arms included the Barmeo re- rings, which are sometimes taken to symbolize the Holy Trinity. Charles's father, Gilbert, was Count of Arona. His mother, Margaret, was a member of the Million Millen branch of the house of Medi- Medis- Medica and the third son in the family of six children he was born in the castle of Aaron on Lake Magyar 36 miles from Milan on the 2nd of October 1538 now, Barmeo received the Tunsu when he was about 12 years old. And at this time, his parental uncle, Julio Caesar Barmeo, turned over to him the income from the rich Benedictine Abbey of St. Gerentina and Philin, one of the ancient perquests of the family. Perquests of the family. Charles made plans to made plan Charles made plan to his father that all revenues from the abbey beyond what was required to prepare him for a career in the church belonged to the poor and could not be applied to secular use. The young man attended the University of Pavia, Pavia, where he applied himself to study of civil and canon law. Due to the slight impediment of speech, he was regarded as slow, but his thoroughness in industry meant that he made a rapid made rapid progress. In fifteen fifty four his father died, and although he had an elder brother, Count Frederico, he was requested by the father to take the management of the domestic 
affairs after a time he resumed his studies and on 6th of December 1559 earned a doctorate in Utuik Ayur okay then moved on to Rome on December 25th 1559 Bartimeo's uncle, Cardinal Giovanni Angelo Medic, Medica, was elected as Pope Pius IV. And the newly elected pope required his nephew to come to Rome, and on the 13th of January, 1560, appointed him Potentary Apostolic. Shortly thereafter, on the 31st of January, 1560, the Pope created him Cardinal. Created, not created, created him Cardinal. And thus, Charles, as Cardinal's nephew, was entrusted with both the public and the privy seal of the ecclesiastic state. He was also brought into the government of the papal state and appointed supervisor of the Franciscan Carmelites and Knights of Militia. During his four years in Rome, he lived in austerity obliged the Roman curry to wear black and establish an academy of learned persons, the Academy of the Vatican Knights, published their memoirs as the Noctus Vatican. Charles organized the third and last sessions of the Council of Trent in 1563. He had a large share in the making of the Tridentine Cate Catechism Romanus. In 1561, Barmeo founded and endowed a college at Pivia, today known as Alamo College Bermeo, which he dedicated to St. Justin of Padua. Now, on November 1590, 15, on November 1562, his older brother, Federico, suddenly died. His family urged Charles to leave the church to marry and have children so that the family name would not become extinct, but he decided not to leave the ecclesiastic state. So his brother's death, along with his contacts with the Jesuits and the Theatians, and the example of bishops such as Bartholomew of Bergera were the cause of a con conversation of conversion of Charles towards a more strict and operative Christian life, and his aim became to put into practice the dignity and duties of the bishop as drafted by the recent Council of Trent. Archbishop of Milan, Charles was appointed administrator of the Archdiocese of Milan on 7-4-1560, and after his decision to put into practice the role of bishop, he decided to be ordained priest the 4th of September, 1563. 
and on December 7, 1563, he was consecrated bishop in the Sustain Chapel by Cardinal Giovanni Serbian. Charles was formally appointed Archbishop of Milan, Milan on 12 May of 1564, after the former Archbishop Epatio II at Est waived his claims on the Archbishopship. But he was only allowed by the Pope to leave Rome one year later. Charles made his formal entry into Malin as Archbishop on 23rd September 1565. Reform of Malin. After the death of his uncle Pervius IV, Charles contributed men materially to suppressing the cables of the conclave before Charles went to Milan while he was overseeing reform in Rome. A nobleman remarked that the latter city was no longer a place to enjoy oneself or make a fortune. Charles Bermeo has undertaken to remake the city from top to bottom. He said, predicting that the reform's enthusiasm would lead him to correct the rest of the world of the world he has finished with Rome. And therefore, where am I going? Therefore, that is why we have St. Charles or St. Carlos Barmeo, which is why St. Charles became the name of our city here in St. Charles, Missouri. Did I forget to do the weather again? Yes, of course I did. Today's weather forecast for the remainder of the day, rain showers early will develop envelop into more a steady rain overnight. Lows near 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds light and variable. Chances of rainfall 80%. Tomorrow's weather, January 17th, showers in the morning, then cloudy in the afternoon. Temperatures nearly steady in the upper 30s. Winds north northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain are 50%. Moving into Thursday evening, cloudy skies, lows near 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds north northwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Moving into Friday, January the 18th, overcast skies, highs near 36 degrees Fahrenheit, winds east to south, or no, east at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now, Friday night, January 16th, evening, I mean 18th, sorry, evening rain followed by a mix of rain and snow late. Lows near 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds north, I mean east to northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Chances of precipitation, 100%. Not good. We're going to have our snow back. Saturday, January the 19th. Snow during the morning will give way to lingering snow showers during the afternoon. Some mixed winter precipitation possible. Highs near 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds north to northeast at 5 to, or at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Chances of snow, 90%. Mm-hmm. 
according accumulating one to three inches. Now, Saturday night, January 19th, Saturday night, clouds very cold, lows near 12 degrees Fahrenheit, winds north at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Sunday, partly cloudy skies. Did I miss Saturday? I think I missed Saturday. Nope. That was Saturday. Sunday, partly cloudy skies. Sunshine and clouds mixed very cold. Highs near 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds north at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunday night, partly cloudy early with increasing clouds overnight. Very cold. Lows near 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds east to northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday morning, January 21st. Cloudy skies. Highs around 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Moving on to Monday night, mostly cloudy, lows near 24 degrees Fahrenheit, winds south to southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. All right, that looks like it brings us to our portion of the program called Our Daily Bread. And let's see, today the devotion is called Sharing More Than Stuff. That's right. You should always share more than stuff. You should share life events. You should share Jesus with everyone you know. All right, I'm going to be reading uh, Ruth uh, 1, 11 through 18. And if you're keeping up with your Bible in a year, I hope you are so, um, with the Bible with Briscoe, uh, you'll be reading Genesis 39 through 40. And Matthew 11. Of course, uh, I will be reading it. So, if you would like to follow along in your Bible, I use the NIV Bible, the new... Yeah, I use the NIV Bible. So, if you would like to follow along in the NIV then you'll be able to follow along with me and stumble over the same words I'm stumbling over, only you'll know what they are. Okay, here we go. Uh, Ruth. Uh, 11. Or Ruth 1. 11 through 18. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? I am going to have any more I am going to have any more sons who could become your husbands return home my daughters I am too old to have another husband even if I thought there was still hope for me even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons would you wait until they grew up Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me. May the Lord deal with me. Be it ever so sovereignly. If 
even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. And there you have it. So I've got a song for you. That song would be, Well, goodbye, my friends. It's a time that you go. I said, goodbye, my friends. It's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must go. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. This here has been Shenandoah Briscoe saying, hello and how are you? Thanks for tuning in to the Shen Show. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So be blessed in Jesus' name. And come back and see me tomorrow because, well, I'll be here. And I hope you are too.